So carboxylic acids are our theme. So carboxylic acids are another family. Okay. Again, we're at the end of our family till we do reactions and we'll get the one last ester family. So we did anes, enes, ines, cycloanes, cycloenes, aromatics, organic halides, alcohols, and now carboxylic acids. The later families have key functional groups. At the beginning, we had single, double, triple bonds. We had hydroxyl functional groups in alcohols, and we have a carboxyl functional group. You've seen this before. You maybe just weren't used to the name. Carboxyl groups make an acidic piece to a compound. So a carboxyl group has a C double bonded O and then a hydroxyl group. So you have to be careful. If you see an OH, you've got to look a little more closely. We don't call this an alcohol when there's a double bonded O right next to that hydroxyl group. It puts it, it's a carboxyl, the whole thing. So this whole grouping. Now, there's names for each of these pieces, one of which you have to know, the other wouldn't show up to post-secondary. So the bottom red arrow is the hydroxyl group that we've seen before. The other red arrow is a carbonyl, which is kind of close to carboxy, but it's not the same. So particularly in university, if you ever hear carbonyl, it's not what we're talking about. It's just the C double bond O. Okay? So carbonyl is just that. The carboxy group has two different pieces to it. The H connected to the O is an acidic proton, an acidic hydrogen. It can come off. Okay? And we saw all kinds of carboxylic acid in that uh, organic unit. So let's look at some carboxylic acids again. I say again, post uh, our acid base unit. Naming rules are pretty similar, so I'm not giving a big list. The new part is we're going to drop the E from the alkane stem name. Well, that's just like alcohols, but we're not going to add OL we're going to add oic space acid. Everything else will be uh, the same. So I'm going to jump right into an example, a three carbon long example. So to name these, you know, we're always finding the parent or the stem first. And that's going to be the heart of our naming rules. We would name the alkane version of that. I'm not going to write the E because I'd have to take it away. And then I notice we have one of those carboxies, the carbonyl and the hydroxyl, so this is not an alcohol. We add oic space acid. We definitely had methanoic acid, ethanoic acid in our acid base table names previously. No, I didn't leave room to put a number in. Do we need a number? Is there another position that we could put that carboxy group? In particular, could it be in the middle is the main thing I want to discuss. Well, to tackle that, let's do it and see what happens. 
when I stick the carboxy in the middle. So there's my three carbons, and I'm going to double bond O, single bond OH. Is that possible? The answer is no. There's something wrong there. When we look at the carbon with the carboxy, there is one, two, three, four, five bonds. And that's not allowed. Carbons can't have that amount of bonds. So this, I want to put an X through, is not okay. It can't happen. You can never have that functional group, the carboxy, at, in the middle. So it has to be at the end. So we're never going to need to put a number there. The number that's missing is always a one. And this carbon has to be our one carbon, our two, and our three. So when we set our numbers, never start numbering from the far end from the carboxy. Uh, second heading is already typed out. Uh, we had phenol as a compound that you need to know. Uh, benzoic acid is an incredibly common organic compound that gets a name for, for a combination of uh, elements. So benzoic acid, we see kind of that benzene word in it. The ending got dropped, and that's because we've got one of those benzene rings that makes the compound aromatic at the heart of benzoic acid. Now, I can't put the carboxy functional group right on the ring because there's not enough bonding capacity. Every one of those corners of the ring has a hydrogen there, one bond. Okay? In order to put the carboxy group, I have to go up to another carbon that has enough bonding capacity to have uh, a double bonded O and then an OH. So this is benzoic acid. It's often used in uh, an ester lab in high school. And it's uh, a main part of acetyl salicylic acid. Salicylic acid just has another functional group added to this. So it's used in a lot of pharmaceuticals, benzoic acid, or the building blocks of, of pharmaceuticals. Okay. So this is in the memorized camp. I would expect somewhere in the diploma you'll have to be familiar with benzoic acid. My last typed out example gives us a little practice with something being added to a carboxylic acid and how we deal with the numbering. So we have our usual sequence. We deal with the stem or parent first. We deal with the ending uh, second, and then we deal with what we've added in alkyl groups or um, halogens. So prop is our beginning. Oic acid, so we know we have a carboxylic acid. We need to add. C double bond O O H to one of the ending, one of the ends. I've added it to the right, which means I am numbering from the right. That family sets my numbering. One, two, three. There's no way I'm ever going to have a one chloro because there's not there's no spot to put. There's no bonding capacity left but the two and the three position could have a chlorine. In this particular example, the chlorine is at the end. Now, whether I go up, down, that doesn't matter, as long as the third carbon has the chlorine. Now, you'd be highly unlikely to see a con uh, condensed structure, but you could see a line structure. So I'll do the, a line structure in kind of my wrapping up of this lesson on carboxylic acids. 
So I always start with the parent or the stem, get out three, get out the three carbons. One, two, three, lift. I've got a double bonded OOH at one end. That H I have to show because it's not connected to a carbon. Then at the other end, we've got a chlorine. So I have to do a line off the last carbon and put CL at the end to tell the reader there's no carbon there. So that would be the line structure for 3-chloropropanoic acid. Okay. You can add methyls, you can add chloros. Okay. What you can add, but not in this course, is a hydroxyl group. Okay. We're not covering hydroxyl groups added to carboxylic acids. There's a, some different rules. You treat the hydroxyl group as a side group, and we're not going into that. Okay. But it's one of those what ifs you might have okay. that I can answer to you privately, but not, uh, not a testable thing. So that wraps up the families. Lesson on intermolecular forces and boiling points is next, and then we're going to run through the reactions in the following lesson.